<laughs> G'day, Ricky here from the Australian Guitar Show. I've been joined by Michael of Polaris Basses. G'day. Hi, Ricky. How are you? Hi, everyone. Yeah. I'm very good, thanks. Excellent. Thank you for uh, taking a, a day off to come and hang out. I really appreciate oh, that. I actually work part-time, so I don't work Fridays in my day job. Nice. What you, uh, this way. And what is your day job? I'm lecturing at a university in Bandura. Oh, I mean, obviously, that's that's something that takes a lot of dedication and a whole mm. whole whole life work, like a body of work, would be pretty huge. But so, where do you fit making bases into this? Well, look, I've I've played for quite some time, um, coming up to well two thirds of my life now, mm -hmm. approximately. I'm not telling you how old I am. Well, um, I was going to figure yeah. that's maybe what, 10, <laughs> ten years. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And look, I've had my ups and downs, so I would play a lot in cover bands and all that sort of stuff. And then you have your little hiatuses where you just have different interests. I loved running, for example, so a lot mm -hmm. of time went into training for that. Mm. And then you come back and I started playing again and I was really interested in the in Dingwall basses because they have this multi-scale, the fan frets. And I like the theory behind it. So you have a 37 inch B string and a 34 inch uh, G string and the B string is tighter and you get a tighter sound and all that sort of stuff. And I ordered one, I decided to order one and I said, no worries, Michael, it'll be ready in nine months. And I'm going, no way. Why does it take so long to take a couple of pieces of timber and put it all together? Hmm. So I enrolled in a guitar making course or bass making course. Right. And that was here in here in Australia in Melbourne, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, that was run at NMIT. Yep. Uh, by David Searle. I was going to say, was that with David Searle? That was with David. I'm uh, hoping to. Uh, I've chatted with David, and he's keen to have a chat too. So I'm looking forward to interviewing him. He's my time. guru. So I went into that course, and uh, you know, David was super supportive. I had my own ideas in terms of design. Um, lots of little influences. A little bit of thumb in there. A little bit of Warwick in there. Uh, yeah, thumb, Warwick thumb. A mm. little bit of Dingwall in there. Some Sandberg in there. So mm -hmm. I, I put it all together, and ended up not making a P bass or a jazz bass, um, but something that I liked. And mm -hmm. David, like I said, was super supportive, and he he f sort of fostered that. Mm. And already a few weeks in, I, I, know, I felt like this is really enjoyable, you know? And once I finished, there was no way I was going to stop. Mm. People can't see them right now, but uh, there is a slathering of <laughs> bases over here within my uh, line of sight, which uh, just impeccable. I just, yeah, it's, it's wood porn. Is it? It is, it is. <laughs> There's that, lots of zits on those on that porn. I have to say, so <laughs> you, you but every every <laughs> every creator will always pick the the the, the small yeah. imperfections. You know, I mean, I, I think every every creator does it. And that's the interesting thing about working with timber, because mm. every piece is different. Mm. You know, and sometimes you have to dig in really hard to get something out of it, mm. and at other times you look at it and already some stuff flakes off. You know, it's, right, yeah. it's really, and every piece is different and that makes it interesting. And the thing is, I know what is not quite right mm. with what I've built so far, mm. but I try to avoid those issues in future builds. Mm. And hopefully I get to a stage where I don't have any mistakes to make anymore, which will never happen, but you know, one can hope. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the good thing with that though, and, and what I've seen from other, you know, builders and luthiers and so forth is that those mistakes are what lead to refinement and evolution <laughs> and and often uh, you know design changes and and yep. just that con constant education i mm. suppose in the workshop i still go to david's workshop to use sort of heavy machinery and all do all the sort of easier stuff at home but in a workshop we have a saying you know the important thing is to turn a screw up into a feature mm. and if you can do that everything's actually okay so with your designs obviously you've got um you seem to have a, a, a couple of kind of key features obviously you got the extended upper horn which is quite nice yes and but yet I also see you do like a slightly shorter version and stuff like that do you tend to go different with every bass no I have sort of four distinct body shapes okay. I work with mm -hmm. so one would be I call it Q because it's an evolution of the P bass mm -hmm. uh, very big body um, you know, it's still kind of slab, but heavily contoured at the same time, because I prefer that and a lot thinner. Um, I've built quite a few of those. Then I have something that I 
call Merlin. They're the ones with the longer horn, mm -hmm. which actually ends at the 12th fret. So yeah. it's not extended, it's just that the body is a lot smaller. Yeah, and you so know, does that mean, and obviously just further cut into the neck, so upper access is yeah. just, just more, more yeah. available. Yeah. yeah. Um, more recently, I well, I have the Manta as well, the one with the blue neck, mm -hmm. which we might want to talk about later on. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> so that's a little bit based on on, on a Stingray. Um, then I have the Sirius, and very recently I thought I might try something short scale because everything I've built so far is basically 35 inch. Oh. I have a B string. I built five string bases, mm. and you want to have that extra length for clarity and definition. And you don't really read about short scale basses with a B string much mm. because people always say, oh, it's too floppy. And, and I, s <coughs> I thought I'd give it a shot. Mm. And I'm actually really happy. So it's a 30 inch, right. nice and compact. Yep. I actually played it last night at rehearsal for the first time. And it sat beautiful in the mix and the guitarist said, that is really tight. Mm. So cool, that's fine with me. So do you find yourself drawn to using a particular wood for bodies or, or is it a case of you just, again, you're willing to try, you, you just experiment with stuff? Can I say something controversial? I don't believe in tone wood. Oh, fair enough. You know, yeah, yeah, there's it, uh, several that would completely and utterly yeah. agree with you. Um, with solid bodies, it does contribute, but I think many people override it. So you look at, you change your strings from round wound to flat wound, you get a completely different sound, mm. you know, things like that. Electronics, mm. pickups, super important. Hardware to an extent. Timber, I don't know, 5%, maybe 10%. Mm. It's probably more to do with the consistent density of the timber. So if you have a different species of timber, but it has the same density as maple, you will probably get a very similar sound out mm. of that mm. sort of contradicting what I just said before. I don't believe in tone wood, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's probably more to do with the structure of the timber rather than the species of the wood. Mm. So obviously with uh, wood densities and so forth and, and your, your perspective on your perspective on tone woods, mm. um, that kind of leaves you down to electronics and, and pickups. So mm. where, where do you find yourself leaning towards with, with pickups and so forth? Do you, do you use brand specific? Or? Yeah, yeah. Look, I've played around a little bit. I've used Nordstrand pickups, um, the Shorty, for example, and there's another one, the fretless, the Rasta bass. Mm -hmm. Secondhand EMGs in there, mm -hmm. 4THZ. Um, they seem to be working fine. But I generally tend to use Delano pickups. Delano? Delano pickups. Yeah. How do you spell that? Uh, Sorry. D E L A N O. Okay. German brand. Mm -hmm. um, hardware, you can't really go past hip shot. Yeah, pretty good way. stuff, isn't it? Yeah. But I've tried um, ETS, which is a German company as well, mm -hmm. and it's phenomenal. The quality is outstanding. It's mm. so easy to adjust and everything. It, it just sits there. There's a couple of examples there as well. Yeah, no. Electronics. I noticed that the Delano pickups seem to be working really nicely with Nordstrand preamps. Okay. But I've also used Glockenklang, which is another German brand. Mm -hmm. And I just got a delivery for a batch of short scale bases I'm currently building of Noll preamps, another German brand. What's kind of your in vision for what you're doing with Polaris? Mm. <sighs> Ideally, I would like it to be a self-sustaining hobby. That's a, that's a good way to put it. If I could get to somewhere between 10 and 20 a year, I think that would be manageable. Uh, but that would be the, uh, you know, that would be about it. Well, so that's an, that's an impressive number, you know, considering, you know, your full-time life and, and, you know, work and so forth, and trying to balance all that out. Yeah. That's, that's still an impressive number of instruments to kind of make on a custom level. Well, um, you know, like I said, 10 to 20 would be the absolute maximum. Mm. And uh, if, you, if you work in batches, I think it's actually reasonably okay to achieve that mm. yeah i mean this yeah. has taken me about four four and a half years you know mm. so where i'm now so i, I did that course uh, in ooh, what is it 2015 yeah and it's been a very organic process mm. and that's really suiting me mm. you know i don't want to push things um i don't advertise really and i suppose the law of attraction I think is is a, a good thing to have when people you know people will gravitate towards mm. something and if they see it and go oh man that's i want that mm. 
you know, that's how I've bought most of the stuff I buy. You mentioned commissioned bases, so mm -hmm. people, you know, so is that something where you still created your own design or did they have a little bit of creative input there? Absolutely. So that's how it would normally work. I, as I said before, I have my certain body types that I use as a template, mm. but uh, people can basically choose their electronics, their pickups, uh, the hardware. I make suggestions, but they can uh, improve on that or change it, amend it to their liking. Mm. And then I'm happy to modify the body shapes to a certain extent, but not too much. So the Merlins are pretty much set in stone. I don't want to play around with that. The uh, the cues, I've, which is based on the P-Base, uh, I've built a couple that are actually quite different. So I built a 32 inch four string with a purple heart fingerboard, for example, which looked really nice. But the upper horn, it was almost like a one and a half cut base. So the upper horn was really, really fairly high up on the neck. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is that customization which I can do because I, I do have templates, but I'm happy to go away from them, mm -hmm. at least in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you find the purple heart as far as a fretboard goes? Like just the density and feel? Beautiful. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Easy. It, it is hard, but at the same time, it's easy to work with, very predictable. When you when you work with it, yeah, you know you put a certain amount of pressure on, and you know reasonably exactly how much you take off every time, and mm. easy to sand, and the finishing is easy to yeah, mm. and it looks looks spectacular. And so, what about uh, fret? Ah, well, that's that's yeah. What are you using for frets? I started out with small frets, and now I use Mando frets. Uh, I've heard of a couple very of tiny that frets. Yeah, and that came of. I've always preferred smaller frets. Mm -hmm. And the Dingwall that I had, the Z2, that actually had the Mando frets coming from Lee Sklar. <coughs> and the last few bases I built actually have the Mando frets in them. And they're great. Mm. You know? Well, I suppose it gives you less catch areas on your hand too when you're going up and down the neck. You're not really yeah. catching the edge of a fret yeah. so much. And, you know, people often say, well, don't you damage your fretboard when you push down? And I actually play very close to the fret mm. and I'll use relatively light pressure because mm. the action on the bases is actually quite nice, you mm. know. Mm. So there is never an. I don't think I've ever pushed so hard on the string that I touched the fretboard. Right. What kind of radius are you tending to lean towards That's on the That's a good question, too. I'm um, set on 20. 20 inch. Right. Um, why? Good question. You didn't ask you me, asked but it. I asked it. <laughs> um, you um, could just interview yourself. That'd be great. Look, on a base, you don't bend much. No. no. Um, it, it feels really comfortable for me. Hmm. Again, most of the designs I've come up with and improvements I think that I've made over the couple of years that I've worked with Timber and making bases are because I like it, you know. It suits what I do on the bass when I play. Mm -hmm. And 20 inch feels very natural to me. It might not for some who love jazz basses with a 7.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine, but I'm, I'm not even going there. There's so many great jazz basses out there and mm -hmm. P basses. It's not something I want to get into at all. So, you know, this is my little niche and nice and flat and it's easy to get across and, you know, you don't have to reach over. It's just there. So I reckon we should have a look at some of these bases. Sure, the way go for it. it. Yeah. You pick what you want to talk about. And yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'll bring them over to you. Should we start off with the blue neck? That's fine. Yeah. So that's Northern Ash. All right. Now... The idea behind this is, this is obviously a Manta, which is based on a Stingray-ish. The pickup is in, a, this pickup is in a Sting position, mm -hmm. and this reverse P is actually in the P position. So you get, with a three-way switch, you can switch either just this pickup, or both in, C, both together, or just a Music Man pickup. Mm. I'm actually telling you a lie, even as I speak. <laughs> this, this switch is just for the Music Man pickup. Oh, okay. So I can switch parallel single coil series. Right. And I have a four-way rotary switch here, like in a Dingwall. Right. And I can switch that to just the P. Yep. Both in series. Yep. Both in parallel, right. or just the Music Man. Wow. Okay. A That's a lot of tonal options for one bass and two Straight switches. away. Yeah. So this is basically a can-do-anything bass, really. Mm. <clears throat> and 
Look, I always wanted to have a blue base, and this is northern ash, and I did the grain filling with a black uh, filler, and you know, so the grain pops out a little bit more. Then I put the blue on, and the neck was more or less a dare. Right. So as, uh, as far as the doing it in blue, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm talking to David, and he goes, I'm saying, oh, you know, what do you think? And he said, go for it. And I did. And look, I like it. People call it Smurf base. Uh, <laughs> I call it YOLO, you only live once, because, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's a different combination of stuff. So what's, what's yeah. the neck made out of? Uh, the neck is just maple, three-piece maple. maple. Yep. I like this and little touch here, that's nice. Just yeah, that look, what I do, if you look carefully, you will see that uh, the neck finishes here on mm. the front, but on the back, it actually extends right to the pickup. Right. right. So what I do is I, I set everything up and I route the neck pocket right down to here, mm. and then I fit the neck, and then I put the top on. Mm. Uh, and the reason for that is you have a lot more contact area. Yep. Uh, but you don't lose the visual impact of the top. Yeah. You know, another thing, matching headstocks. Uh, I try to do that as much as possible, mm. not always. And the uh, truss rod cover always has my little logo in there with did I notice lumen one light the other, dots. Did I, I was going to say, I, I yes. noticed one was illuminated mm. the other day. So, so they glow in the dark. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that, just, that just looks fantastic. I really love your little notch that you kind of do here too. It's almost like a little beacon of when you're trying mm. to plug in your base. It's yeah. like a little 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 notch there goes, this is where the hole is. Do you want, do you want to show the new little short yeah, scale fire? Yeah, give, give us that. Oh, that feels so good even just picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sensation. Ta. The other that thing is... too, I, I like the um, Dunlop flush mounts. The flush mount stuff, yeah. So this came about, like I said before, because I didn't believe, you know, you, you can get a B string that sounds okay. Uh, and at least acceptable. So I had a look in my parts bin. I still had those pickups floating around. I had those tuners floating around. I had the Wengi pieces around, the piece of uh, maple in the middle that was there. Mm. So it's basically a parts bin mm. base. Mm. And this, like I said, is a Koya. Yep. So this is uh, four pieces um, and it's pine. It's really soft. I could probably dint that without a problem but it's mechanically super stable. And the thing is, this is just dyed with um, Feast Watson's brown Japan. Yep. That's it, one cover. And it almost looks like walnut. I, 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 that's <laughs> kind of what I thought it was when I first, yeah, yeah. When I first picked yeah. it up and just had a quick look. But this is walnut. Yep. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. Fretboard is obviously maple. There's a couple of bits of purple heart. I was going to, I noticed the purple heart <laughs> on the edges there. I had those lying around and yeah, I thought, nice well, touch. put them on there. I don't have a truss rod cover on there yet, but uh, that will happen eventually. I'm not in a hurry for it. And is that a Sapili top? No, this no? is actually spalted maple. Oh, spalted maple. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I was spalted maple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and this, I promise, is the last spalted maple base I ever make because right. it was just a pain. Yeah. If you look really carefully, you can it's see those lighter bits. Yeah. So these are filled with epoxy that I put uh, glow powder into. Mm. So these actually glow blue in the dark. In this case, I didn't use luminlay side dots. Mm. What I did is I drilled a hole and filled it with wingy uh, sanding dust, um, added some super glue to it and sanded it back. Wow. And nice that turned touch. out really nice. You know, it, it kind of works with this. The preamp is a two-band Glock, Glockenklang, mm -hmm. and again, just a switch for the pickups, uh, front, both, uh, bridge. And so how did you go with the, the B string in the end, with the, the shorter scale? I'm super happy. You felt it kind of, no, it's, it's, its tension and everything? You know, it's, it's, it, it's not as tight as a 50, uh, mm -hmm. a 35, but it's, it's totally playable and has really good definition, like I said last night. Mm -hmm. and, Rehearsal, the comments I had were super positive. And I mean, even just uh, gra when I grabbed it and kind of brought it over, just the initial feel of it is, uh, as a guitar player, yeah. a as well, you know, it almost makes me feel like, uh, oh, I could, I could play that all night without feeling like I'm overstretching. Totally. Like if I ever got a job to play bass, which I don't know why anybody would hire a guitar player such as myself to play a bass guitar, but if they ever did, that I'd play that all night. With yeah. that, with, with, without oh, it's, and it's so comfortable. Let's have a look at, um, obviously you've got the Ruster base there, but let's maybe grab the Fretless. Mm -hmm. That throws a nice little uh, cross section of bases. Yeah. All right, so that's 
the Merlin model. Uh, just finished basically. Um, and oh. So it has a nice little tone to it. It's got plenty of volume. Like it, it's Even that's acoustically. Actually, yeah, yeah, acoustically, that's yeah. actually got. It, I think it has to. Yeah. You know, if it if it's the and you need the electronics to amplify it, I think no, 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 you need to do that. Mm. So Bocaldi <coughs> top, uh, very weird timber to work with. Um, it smells like mustard a little bit when you work on it. And when I put my finish on, it went all really matte. Uh, neck through, obviously. Uh, so what you have is five piece neck. The center in this case is a wedge. Uh, maple, walnut, obviously a walnut body. Um, fretboard maple, bird's that, eye maple. That bird's eye is pretty nice, isn't it? It does look nice. Yeah, that's great. And what I do with my fretless is because I hate to put stuff on the fretboard. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, I use very thin frets. So you can see most of the fretboard and on the fretless I use ideally nothing. <laughs> um, <coughs> so I put my markers in the neck. Mm. All right, so I, I cut those holes first. Yep. Uh, and in this case, I just put veneer in. Nuts, ebony. Yep. So it's not oh, just, nice. you know. Oh, uh, did you? Didn't notice that. To keep it uh, with a wooden theme. Yeah. Uh, the tuners in this case are shala. They kind of like give me an old uh, clock. Yeah. Like an old clock no, kind of You can see the clockwork yeah. inside, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and now obviously the uh, the pickup, the Delano, I yeah. mean, that's that's a bit of a key feature. I mean, it I, is. The, the thing I find about this is that everywhere you look, there's something really quite spectacular to look at. Thank you. Um, you know, whether it's the, the book matching or whether it's the bird's eye, you know, the nice, nice little the clockwork machine heads, everything's great, but... That obviously sticks out in the mm. world. That's, that's so that's the extender pickup from Delano, and it's it's hard to describe. It, there is, it has oomph. Okay, so it, it's really a hot pickup. Thank you so much again for taking your your, your time out to come over and hang no out and show us these bases. I mean, you've got plenty more there for us to uh, indulge in, and obviously people can kind of head over to your Instagram account your facebook yeah. so it's yeah. polaris bases that's it yeah on instagram facebook it's the same thing uh it's dr base polaris bases dr base yeah dr base is my email account dr base at me.com yep so yeah and do you have a website at all no no website so no. just facebook and instagram is the best yeah. way to get a hold of you well again thank you for your time no worries Rick. really appreciate it mate so, yeah i appreciate this so there you go folks there's another episode of the australian guitar show for you this is michael from polaris bases make sure you check out his wares on instagram and facebook uh, as always thanks for watching and uru see you later